Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, President Barack Obama, First Lady Michelle Obama, Secretary Chuck Hagel, and General Martin Dempsey will pay tribute to the lives lost at the Pentagon and on American Airlines Flight 77 on September 11, 2001, by placing a wreath at the Zero Age Line of the Pentagon Memorial. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the flag on the Pentagon building. The flag hangs today from sunrise to sunset, in honor of Patriot Day and in remembrance of the 184 lives lost at the Pentagon. Ladies and gentlemen, the National Anthem of the United States, performed by the United States Navy Brass Quintet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Army Chief of Chaplains, Major General Donald Rutherford. And let us pray together. Lord of hope, we have endured over a decade of conflict. We have raised a generation that has never seen a sunrise without war on our national horizon. If we look back on the events that brought us to the present, it would be easy to despair. Let us not forget 
we have yet to write the ending of our national story. It would take a moment to remember the day that it began, when we witnessed the flames of hatred that were, that were extinguished by acts of valor. We heard the cries of the lost that were met with the prayers of the grateful. We lived every day with those memories of those whose dreams the darkness left unfulfilled. A concluding handshake, a last goodbye, and a final kiss. Remember those that we lost, and we grieve for them, we grieve for their families and for ourselves. And we come to remember them as well as those who continue to fight on our frontiers and those who stand watch within our borders at home. We come to remember that those who expected weakness have instead seen strength. Those who wanted division have instead seen unity. Those who sowed seeds of violence and hatred have watched us harvest the fruits of grace and of hope. Thirteen years ago, the lights of darkness hoped to extinguish. They still shine today. In our hope and resolve, let the darkness cannot enter our lives. In his grace and mercy, we pray this day. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, 13 years ago today, at 9.37 a.m., the Pentagon was attacked. Please join us in observing a moment of silence to remember those who perished. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey. Mr. President, Mrs. Obama, Mr. Secretary, distinguished guests, thank you for being here this morning. I want to offer a special welcome to the families and friends of those we lost on these grounds 13 years ago. We know these memorial ceremonies, and we know you've been through many, are especially tough, emotion-filled moments for you. It takes a great deal of courage to keep coming back here, so thanks for being here. Not long ago, I received a note from a mom whose daughter is buried just across the way at Arlington Cemetery. She said the pain of losing someone you love, even years later, never really goes away. At any instant, a smell or a color or a song or a date on the calendar like today can bring into stark relief that first raw moment when everything changed. She said if there's any secret to grieving, it's that there can be room for sorrow and joy, sadness and pride, to exist in the same space at the same time. And she learned that grief is not a lack of faith nor a sign of weakness, it's just the price of love. Today is foremost about reflecting and about remembering and about the love for the 184 lives that ended here at the Pentagon and those that, per that perished in New York and in Somerset County. Today is also about strength and about resolve. We find strength in the children who lost parents on 9-11 and who have blossomed into fine young adults and are now making their own mark on their world. We find resolve in the men and women that 9-11 roused to step forward to defend our country, a generation that has served in Iraq and in Afghanistan. And today offers us, all of us, the opportunity to rededicate our own lives to the causes of our great nation and its great future. For as one of our nation's leaders said, we could easily allow our time and energy to be consumed by the crisis of the moment, of the day, but we must also lay the groundwork to help define our future. It's now my privilege to introduce the man who spoke those words and who strives to live them every day our nation's Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel. <clears throat> General Dempsey, thank you. Mr. President, Mrs. Obama, distinguished guests, family members, survivors. We will never forget what happened on this day, at this hour, in this place. An act of terror that shook the world and took the lives of 184 Americans. 
Today, we remember those we lost on that day, this day, as we are surrounded by those who love them. We celebrate our nation's strength and resilience, surrounded by those who embody it. And we draw inspiration from the ways in which survivors and victims' families continue to honor their legacy. Our thoughts also turn to others whose lives were forever changed that day, the first responders and survivors whose heroism and resilience we celebrate, the Pentagon personnel who came to work the next day with a greater sense of determination than ever before, and the men and women in uniform who have stepped forward to defend our country over 13 long years of war, bearing incredible sacrifices along with their families. We live at a time of many complicated challenges, but America has always faced challenges, and we have always responded as a nation united in purpose, woven together in a fabric of strong character and resounding commitment to each other and to our country. To lead our nation at such a defining time requires not only the courage and the vision to lead, but the humility that recognizes this unique privilege. These traits are embodied in our Commander-in-Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good morning. The scripture tells us, us we count as blessed those who have persevered. Secretary Hagel, General Dempsey, members of our armed forces, and most of all, the survivors of that September day and the families of those we lost, Michelle and I are humbled to be with you once again. It has now been 13 years, 13 years since the peace of an American morning was broken, 13 years since nearly 3,000 beautiful lives were taken from us including 125 men and women serving here at the Pentagon. 13 years of moments they would have shared with us. 13 years of memories they would have made. Here once more we pray for the souls of those we remember, for you, their families who love them forever, and for a nation that has been inspired by your example your determination to carry on, your resolve to live lives worthy of their memories. As Americans, we draw strength from you. For your love is the ultimate rebuke to the hatred of those who attacked us that bright blue morning. They sought to do more than bring down buildings or murder our people. They sought to break our spirit and to prove to the world that their power to destroy was greater than our power to persevere and to build. But you and America proved them wrong. America endures in the strength of your families who, through your anguish, kept living. You've kept alive a love that no act of terror can ever extinguish. You, their sons and daughters, are growing into extraordinary young men and women they knew you could be. By your shining example, your families have turned this day into something that those who attacked us could never abide, and that is a tribute of hope over fear and love over hate. America endures in the tenacity of our survivors. After grievous wounds, you learn to walk again and stand again. After terrible burns, you smiled once more. For you, for our nation, these have been difficult years, but by your presence here today in the lives of service that you have led, you embody the truth that no matter what comes our way, America will always come out stronger. America endures in the dedication of those who keep us safe the firefighter, the officer, the EMT who carries the memory of a fallen partner as they report to work each and every day, 
prepared to make the same sacrifice for us all. Because of these men and women, Americans now work in a gleaming freedom tower. We visit our great cities. We fill our stadiums and cheer for our teams. We carry on because, as Americans, we do not give in to fear, ever. America endures in the courage of the men and women who serve under our flag. Over more than a decade of war, this 9-11 generation has answered our country's call. And three months from now, our combat mission in Afghanistan will come to an end. Today, we honor all who have made the ultimate sacrifice these 13 years, more than 6,800 American patriots. And we give thanks to those who serve in harm's way to keep our country safe and meet the threats of our time. America endures in that perennial optimism that defines us as a people. Beginning tomorrow, there will be teenagers, young adults, who were born after 9-11. It's remarkable. And while these young Americans did not know the horrors of that day, their lives have been shaped by all the days since, a time that has brought us pain but also taught us endurance and strength, a time of rebuilding, of resilience, and of renewal. What gives us hope, what gives me hope, is that it is these young Americans who will shape all the days to come. Thirteen years after a small and hateful minds conspired to break us, America stands tall and America stands proud. And guided by the values that sustain us, we will only grow stronger. Generations from now, Americans will still fill our parks, our stadiums, our cities. Generations from now, Americans will still build towers that reach toward the heavens, still serve in embassies that stand for freedom around the world, still wear the uniform and give meaning to those words written two centuries ago. Land of the free, home of the brave. Generations from now, no matter the trial, no matter the challenge, America will always be America. We count as blessed those who have persevered. May God bless your families who continue to inspire us all. May God bless our armed forces and all who serve to keep us safe. And may God continue to bless the United States of America.